Harry's Wife, Part 100.22 Consequences She's Losing Support Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I regularly explain to you that with lesser and mid-range narcissists they suffer from the law of collateral consequences, which is why, if you follow my work and apply it, you can have a successful outcome with regard to them. The fact is that the narcissism is absolutely brilliant at getting control and maintaining it one way or the other through the three assertions of control. It will draw fuel in some shape or form, not always from one person but from somewhere, ditto character traits and residual benefits, so the narcissism always does its job. The problem is, with the less evolved lesser and the mealy-mouthed mid-ranger, they experience collateral consequences. It's a little bit like, as I've explained to you in the past, that if you had a bush burning at the side of your house, rather than turning the hose pipe on to put it out, you then decide that you're going to demolish that side of the house in order to extinguish the fire. That then results in the house falling down. That's the collateral consequence. You've got the fire put out. Huzzah! But then, oh dear, in the next moment or two, your house has fallen down. It's similar for the lesser or mid-range narcissist. The narcissism does the job that it's designed to do, but invariably then creates a collateral consequence. Not that the narcissist cares, because as soon as time moves on to that collateral consequence, guess what the narcissism does? Exactly. It denies the problem, deflects it, blames it elsewhere, kicks the can essentially down the road, and on and on again it goes. If that leads to the narcissist losing friends, they'll go and find friends elsewhere. If that means they have to leave town, they'll move to another town. If they lose their job, they'll go and get a different one, or sponge off somebody. So the narcissist will just dust themselves down and move on. Again, always seeking the prime aims elsewhere. But the point is, that ultimately, where you're dealing with a high-profile narcissist, which Harry's wife is, the exposure that she has sought by being on an international stage is then thrown back in her face as more and more people start to see the behaviours. And the collateral consequence is more people see how she behaves and it erodes her support. And there is one example of this which comes from news.com.au from somebody called Nama Winston, who writes, Opinion FFS, Harry's wife, now you've only got yourself to blame for the hate. I defended her like goddamn Erin Brockovich, but there is no coming back from the most wanky statement of the decade. Here, there is a supporter, like Chris Shipp, who used to support her, has turned and decided, this ain't for me no more, I'm out of here. Nama Winston is of the same view, and it's gathering pace. Let's dive into what she has to say about it. I hate it when this happens, when you've backed someone, remained loyal, staunchly defended them for years, and then it turns out you've wasted your energy because all the rumours are true. It's happened to me again this week with Harry's wife. After her quite frankly ridiculous interview in The Cut, the article contains multiple points at which the Duchess of Sussex loses me, finally. But the biggest one is right at the beginning. Actually, just after the headline. It was at that moment I thought, I've made a huge mistake. In 2018, when Harry's wife promised, or rather announced that she was pregnant, I excitedly tweeted about the future of the royal family writes Winston, who, let's face it, is very much into pure lineage and shit like that. I loved that biracial Harry's wife was coming along and shaking things up in a family revered by its country and the world for stealing a lot of things, including people, and thereby becoming rich and powerful. Coulda, shoulda, woulda is my response, but hey, I'll save that for another occasion. I've written many, many articles, Winston writes, defending Harry's wife. When some socialite complained about her tainting the royal seed, my mother-in-law had expressed something similar so I could relate, when she took a private jet despite banging on about the environment. My dad died in a car crash, so I understood how Harry's trauma was behind that decision. And I've made the point that Harry's wife's biggest fault is simply not being Kate. How very dare she? 
And like many women, I teared up when the Duchess wrote about the heartbreaking moment she knew she'd miscarried, as I'd experienced something similar. I have easily been able to defend Harry's wife all these years because she spoke to me in many ways, and I wanted to point out that she could be relatable to others too. Even after the infamous Oprah interview, I thought, which disgruntled wife wouldn't want to whinge about their husband's family, even though all the people involved are as high-profile as you can get? But even I'll admit, after the interview, it began to feel like defending the increasingly indefensible. Not just a matter of Harry's wife trying to set the record straight, but just spilling unnecessary tea. At one point, Oprah asked her, were you silent or were you silenced? A brilliant question, which is why that woman is the real queen. Harry's wife claims she was silenced, and sadly she's been in overdrive, making up for lost time ever since, and, most importantly, losing any relatableness she once had. I was hanging on to my loyalty to Harry's wife because, look, I also love to defend an underdog, but I finally lost it this week when I read the cut story. Yes, it was reminiscent of Diana's post-BBC split, or BBC post-split explosive television interview, but with a very important difference. People could emphasise empathise with the extraordinary position Diana was in. Literally, no one feels empathy for Harry's wife at this stage because it's all negative and there is no balance. What was my breaking point? The Duchess banging on about how ambition is a dirty word? People becoming suspicious about what really happened with Archie's nursery fire? No. It was after these words, after the headline, Harry's wife of Monte Shit Show. She's left the firm behind. Harry has found a polo team in Santa Barbara. The kids are doing great. Harry's found a polo team in Santa Barbara. What in the wanky fuckery does that even mean? Is she saying, that's it, you guys? Harry's okay, don't worry. He's on the other side of the world from everything he's ever known, but he's found a bunch of other rich wankers to play an elite and redundant sport with, so all's good. Yes. That message is clear right at the start of the story. I have a husband who's found a new tribe at the Santa Barbara Horsey Play Club because we have money and status and my being a vegan is beside the point, so that tidbit is running at the very top. Of all the things she could be saying, it's this. Harry's wife could be doing so much, raising awareness, motivating, inspiring. She claims in her new podcast that she wants to share stories of battling stereotypes, blah, blah, blah. But now all she's done is alienate herself from anyone who could find a remote common thread, including me, but perhaps not other social climbers. There, I said it. We therefore see the collateral consequence, and here somebody that clearly was very much defending Harry's wife again and again and again. Saw her as relatable. But now the shark has been jumped. And Naima Winston, a supporter of Harry's wife, says, nay, no more. Never. She's out. And what caused it? Is she being racist? Of course not. Is she being misogynist? Hardly. Once again, it's based on Harry's wife's behaviour. She loses a supporter, a journalist, who repeatedly would tweet and speak up about her. But she's gone now. And there are more and more like Nama Winston, who will shrug and think, I can't identify with what she's talking about. I actually now, the scales have fallen from my eyes. I can see, actually, that she's nothing like me. How on earth did I ever think that she was? I can't defend somebody that comes out with tripe like this. More and more people will see this. The tide continues to turn. As I've always told you about this downward spiral and the fact that it would crumble, it's now happening. And it will continue to gather pace. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>